I've said this before and I'll say it again, Michael Francis is a rat. Michael Franzese, former Kappa regime in the Colombo crime family and son of the former underboss John Sonny Franzese, was and will always be an informant. Working with the FBI, Michael gave information at his trial leading to the arrest and conviction of Sonny's driver and bodyguard, Frank Campione. Campione pled guilty to avoid Michael Franzese taking the stand against him for obstruction of justice, deferred of sales tax, and tax evasion. He began a four-year sentence on November 6, 1990. Frank Campione was a very, very rough guy. He had broken a guard's jaw on Rikers Island. He had stabbed another inmate in a halfway house 11 times in the neck. He died a few days later. In 1986, he got caught and was sent to prison, but he didn't stay there long. Francis cut a deal. He would talk and pay a $14 million fine, and the government would set him free. All right, well, stop me when I'm wrong, OK? Uh, he was supposed to pay the government $14 million. He hasn't paid anything near $14 million. That's right. There's not a single mafioso in, behind bars because of anything Michael Francis told you. Is that correct? Well, there are people who are in prison based on the information Michael provided. But, but, but no mafia types. Yeah, that, that's not... Well, there are. There's at least one. But Frank Campione, who was a, uh, a chauffeur for his father. A chauffeur. An article written by Jerry Capisi stated... Campione, 47, a former bodyguard and chauffeur for Francis' father, Sonny, pleaded guilty last month to obstruction of justice charges for conspiring with Tut to get information about a 1984 grand jury probe to Francis. Campione said he did it as a favor to his son. Francis claims Campione hired a gang of motorcycle toughs to beat up the wife of a sports agent. Meet Frank's son, Michael, also known as Michael Conti. He was Sonny's driver from 1994 through 1995 until he became a convicted felon. Mike reportedly introduced Sonny to some young stockbrokers in what became the mob on Wall Street. Mike Campione is also known for smacking Michael Francis around 1997 because he put his father Frank in jail. His son Michael, he, he was a tough kid too. He was around Sonny a short time until he became a felon. Newspaper reports had said in the past that he had, uh, sold his father's car and kept the money. I've since talked to some of his family members and Mike, he didn't, he didn't steal the money. He gave the money for the car, every penny, to his mother who needed it at the time. I, I believe him because Mike always had money. He always had money ever since I knew him. He, he wouldn't have to do something like that. Meet Vinnie Mineta, who married Sonny's youngest daughter, Tina, in 1988, but were divorced in 1990 after Vinnie began wearing women's clothing out in public. Normal in my family and the Francis family is terrifying. One day, John's brother-in-law, Vinny, is wearing a dress, high heels, and lipstick. The next day, FBI agents are swimming in the Francis pool, while John, known as Annual Report, is in the backyard or getting high. Meet John Francis Jr., also known to the FBI as Annual Report. John Jr. was born into the family of crime. His brother Michael was the first person that explained the mafia life to him two years prior to his father's first release on parole in 1978. John was never a made man, but he did perform shakedowns, which were made possible by his father's reputation and direct encouragement. He wanted a way out of his life and was approached by the FBI with a proposition that he become an informant and he accepted. In 2005, he wore a wire hidden inside of a baseball cap, catching his father on tape. The information he recorded led to the arrest and conviction of his father, which resulted in an eight-year sentence. John Jr. made a deal with the devil, not only going against his father, but also putting harm towards his sister Gia, who later died from a fatal packet of cocaine supplied by him. John confessed this during his father's trial. During trial, Richard Lynn said to John Jr., wasn't it you who gave the fatal packet of cocaine to your sister? John Jr. replied, yes. John Jr., under questioning, admitted he gave his sister cocaine. Next, Richard Lynn asked, and while your sister was dying, she called you for help, and you wouldn't answer her calls. John Jr. replies, I was getting high. I was very good friends at one time with Sonny's daughter, Gia Franzis. She had a very hard life. She was a very nice person. She volunteered her time at a day camp helping underprivileged children. She had dated Larry Carroza, 
who was Michael's partner. Obviously, she knew something about the murder of Larry Carosa because she was terrified of her two brothers, John and Michael. She was running in and out of the third precinct saying, my life's in danger and saying things about Michael and John. Um, maybe they didn't take her seriously. Maybe there was no proof there. But I always believed that there was something behind her fear. The 1980s was the period that John Jr. was the most active in organized crime, and he was sinking into addiction, describing moving from alcohol to cocaine to crack. In the 1990s, he described himself as a junkie. It was from his drug use he acquired HIV and eventually AIDS. John would typically steal money from his relatives to feed his drug habit to get high with his close friend Michael Netta, also known by the name Chooch. They shared a close friendship with identical disrespect, both being informants to the cops and both ratting on their family members. Anetta framed his brother Gregory Vita. In 1990, Vita was arrested with less than one quarter gram of cocaine. Greg was sentenced to six and a third to 19 years. He continues to make strides in proving his innocence. I have a good story of my brother Michael, who likes to be called Chooch, and John Jr. Franzis. My brother was a landscaper back around 1990, and he would get high with John Franzis and they had become good friends and who knows what, both in informers to the police. For extra money, they used to steal people's shrubs in front of their houses. I remember Frank Campion went on vacation and he came back and all his shrubs were gone. My brother had stolen the shrubs with John Franzis. John Franzis had pointed out that the Campions were on vacation and it was an easy, you know, haul. Obviously John knew that he was on vacation and pointed it out to my brother who was a landscaper and they took all his exotic shrubs. Who who does that to people? I mean, this is crazy. Remember, there's only two people that hurt you in life, your family and your friends. That's for sure, my family. If you would like to support the channel, please check out our Patreon, where members will get access to our entire media catalog, including bonus videos, shout outs and even get a chance to have your questions answered by greg as usual thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time